live from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube covering OpenStack Summit 2016, brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors Red Hat and Cisco. And welcome back to the Austin Convention Center here on the Cube as we wrap up our coverage of OpenStack Summit 2016, day two. Uh, we're not quite in the fourth quarter but we're getting there, I think two thirds of the way through. I'm with uh, Stu and Brian to talk about, I guess uh, the progress report so far, guys, as to what we've seen and heard here from day two, if we would, Stu. Hate to give grades or hate to ask for them, but maybe a scale of some type from what you've got, the vibe from the show and, and kind of the discussions you've had today. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so many pieces. Brian and I talked to, uh, uh, we had Mark and Jonathan on this morning, and you know, when you think, there's really only like, you know, 20 to two dozen you know, members that actually work for the OpenStack Foundation, and here's a 7,500 person show that's running you know, great. Uh, you know, keynote's a lot of fun, they've got live music, which you have to have in Austin. Uh, by the way, you know, uh, this show is, oh, I feel like every year it's like, you know, and I love where we are. Uh, you know, last year was Vancouver, which uh, Dave Vellante texted me during the show, he's like, hey Stu, when are you moving? And I said, well, when are we opening up the office there? I loved it, it was phenomenal. Uh, Austin's one of my favorite places to visit. Unfortunately, I only get here once or twice a year. The food's so good, so, you know, Big kudos to, I mean, OpenStack Foundation. They bring us back here. It's, it's, it's awesome uh, to be part of this. Um, so they're doing good. Uh, the keynotes, it, it's interesting. Uh, on the one hand, I'd say, uh, you know, you usually don't walk in and say, it's not a glitz and glamour. This is not the Salesforce, you know, rock show uh, and celebrities coming up there. You know, here's a bunch of users in there. Some of the vendors are starting to speak in. Uh, it's a little bit more blocking and tackling as to how they do this. A little bit more practical. Uh, not necessarily the sexiest, but, you know, you know, it, it gets the job done, gets them going. Most of the users, they come here for the sessions. There's tons of sessions, so many topics, um, and you know, there's so many different pieces going on from what we talked about, the containers, the you know, networking, uh, you know, storage, and you know, all the various pieces uh, that, that make up all the projects. So there's so many pieces going on, and you know, everything's working real well. It's, uh, you know, the weather you know, is a little warm outside, the air conditioning's great in the expo hall. Um, tonight, they're worried about a little bit of rain and hail. They've got umbrellas for everybody. I mean, you know, they, they, they just, you know, are executing really well on that stuff. So from a conference standpoint, uh, this is great. I, I, I've said it before, this is one of my favorite shows of the year. It's just good community, it's a good vibe, uh, you know, relaxed atmosphere, and, you know, from the Cube standpoint, it's like, there's not another show where I have the breadth and, you know, diversity of guests where I said, you know, we've had, you know, Microsoft, Google, uh, you know, the, the big enterprise guys like Cisco, uh, you know, HPE, uh, Red Hat, you know, lots of players, good thoughtful leaders, people from that have been there at the beginning, startups that have come in, we talked to the VCs, I mean, you know, it's the, the, the pick of, you know, the cream of the crop uh, when we're putting this together. So it's a pleasure to do this, you know, after one day you're a little tired, by the middle of day two, I'm energized, mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't just the Franklin's barbecue, so. <laughs> oh, but that went a long way, Let, let's be honest, and, and probably a long way tonight, too. Um, you know, you mentioned the big brands, too. Uh, interesting, I think about Mark Collier's keynote this morning, um, he shows AT&T, he shows China Mobile, 800 million subs you know, in China, going to open source, going to OpenStack, and so it tells you about, I think, about the evolution of, of uh, what's happening in this space, Brian. Um, let's talk about, uh, I guess, the, the theme that I've heard a lot from, I heard it from Mark, heard it from Jonathan today and others, collaboration is key, and they, they see that as a sea change. That was his words, you know, not mine, uh, yep. Mark's, about a sea change in terms of how people are looking to collaborate in the space, although, the whole premise of, his, of it was open source, open community, but thinks even more so today than six years ago. Yeah, I, you know, what that really means is, you know, OpenStack as, a, as an entire community bit off a gigantic chunk when they first got started. You know, they were going to basically try and, you know, build an open version of this, this you know, thing that Amazon was building, that they're going to try and replace what, what VMware was doing. I mean, those were multi, multi-billion dollar businesses at very, very large scale. Um, and, and, and it took a lot of projects to get there. They used to say, look, OpenStack's going to become the Linux of the cloud. It's going to become the layer. And, and I think what they're starting to realize is um, that, was a, that was a big uh, target. It was a, you know, it was a big, bold idea. Uh, but the reality is being able to not only execute all of that, uh, but, but get it to a point where people could use it was probably more difficult than they thought. 
And what's happened uh, around the periphery of OpenStack is OpenStack does its job very well, and some of the other things, you know, we, we hear about Kubernetes, we hear about containers and Docker, we hear about Mesos, we hear about a lot of other projects that go on, and, and they've been focused on, on their job. You know, it's the, the old Bill Belichick thing, do your job. Um, and, and I think what the OpenStack community is starting to realize is, you know, we, we, we have a space that we're going to live in, we're going to do that very, very well. That's why we're seeing, you know, AT&T and Walmart and, and, and Volkswagen and all those others. Um, but, you know, there's spaces where these other projects in other communities and other foundations do their job very well. And in order for those things collectively to help these big customers and small customers, they're going to have to figure out how to not only collaborate technically, but you know, not get in each other's way as they try and go to market, as they try and make it easier for customers to use this stuff. Um, you know, uh, we were talking to, uh, to Mark Shuttleworth this morning from, from Canonical, uh, and he, he used this term called big software. You know, we're talking about big pieces of software to help solve big problems. And, and you know, they're not all going to come from one place. It's coming from communities and multiple communities. So that's the collaboration they're really talking about. Uh, they're sort of resetting you know, their view of the world and their job. And uh, you know, now it's, a, it's, it's engineering plus collaboration. You know, Mark, uh, something else that, uh, or rather, Stu, that Mark was talking about today it, it, that caught my attention. He said, this is no longer guerrilla warfare. I thought, interesting thought. Um, if you would I mean, expand on that a little bit about, again, the maturation of the market. Yeah, yeah so I mean, one of the things that, that really struck me this week is that if OpenStack was a startup, you know, it'd be dead by now because the death of many startups is, oh, well, we make something and customers want to do 70 different things with it. And it's like, I need to get a niche in the marketplace, I need to work on that. But this is such a big you know, ecosystem. It's not one piece of software, it's all the projects and you've got so many people, and what's the, I mean, is it 5,000, 50,000? How many people contribute code to this, Brian? Like 50,000 people yeah, in the community, it's, it's, about 5,000, 3,000 developers. Yeah, it's a, I, you know, I mean, a lot it's, of people. It's, it's a massive amount of resources so that, you know, you, you take the NFV solution. It's like there's a certain part of the marketplace that cares about that, is going to build that, um, and you know, there's plenty of people that don't care about that. There's the ones that are putting together, uh, had a good conversation today with Verizon, and it was you know, Dell plus Red Hat plus Big Switch, you know, really did it um, and you know, stood up something that's you know, big scale, uh, d doing a lot. But you know, there's not a lot of Verizons out there. I mean, there's less Googles out there. We had Google uh, talking about you know, how they're building, how they look at Kubernetes and containers uh, and uh, you know, how they're going to leverage that. Um, you know, the, the, uh, it was interesting to get the counterpoint from Randy Bias, you know, the discussion of how OpenStack fits into some of the big uh, public clouds, and you know, Randy likes to you know, uh, stick a pin in some of the bubbles sometimes. I wish he was a little more opinionated, that, that's all. Yeah, ne never, never, uh, <laughs> never have to ask Randy to really tell you what he thinks. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's these interesting, you know, some of these things are a little aspirational, we, we like to get these early use cases, these early you know, Lighthouse customers and see how many are going to be, um, and we're still trying to sort out, like we, we talked with, uh, um, you know, Ryan from the VC side is to, you know, how much money really is there in certain things that we can really point to and say, that's OpenStack and how many things are going to be, you know, a lot of the money today is it's in like service providers like Rackspace and it's, you know, there's services and there's other things and it's kind of OpenStack, but how much is it fully there? Um, it's kind of tough to sometimes, you know, track down the numbers. Yeah, well, and this show is, is unique. It, and, you know, we, we tend to go to a lot of shows that are primarily driven by a single vendor, so we'll be at EMC World next week. Everybody on Team EMC is going to be saying, we're all pulling in the same direction, everything's good. You know, here, you've got diversity of, of goals, you've got diversity of, of what they want outcomes. So, yeah, we saw some of the VCs that we talked to today, Kyle and, and, uh, and Ryan, and, and they may not be the happiest campers in terms of maybe their investments in the open source, you know, the OpenStack space. Uh, doesn't mean they're giving up on, on the open source model or, or cloud model, uh, but yet, on the other hand, you know, Red Hat's extremely excited, Rackspace is extremely excited, you know, Mirantis is excited. They're, they're seeing their, their execution sort of you know, work out and, and you're seeing you know, certain customers very excited about where they are. So you know, you're not going to get sort of a, you know, a, the show was either up or down. You're going to get sort of a variety of, you know, I don't want to say winners and losers, but people that are happier than others. And, and next year, the shift may be a little bit different as well, right? We may see people that, that maybe were figuring it out, you know, much ha more happy next year, or you know, things have changed next year. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I almost have the knee-jerk reaction coming in this year, and I say, you know, the operationality uh, of the solution hasn't progressed as much as I'd hope in a year. But 
even if they baked a lot of stuff in the code, that means it's just starting to roll out. So we know there's usually a lag there, especially in the enterprise or even the telco space. You know, some of these rollouts, you know, it's not, you know, flip a switch and it's up. These things do take months, you know, or you know, a year or more to roll out sometimes. So uh, you know, the expression's been overused sometimes that you know we overestimate what we can get done a year, but you know, really underestimate what can be done in five or ten years. But it's true. And for six years in, uh, you know. I'm excited about where OpenStack's gone. Uh, it definitely, uh, you know, it hasn't fizzled and died. The momentum is there. Mm -hmm. There's so many pieces there. Um, and there's a lot of value that's been added into the ecosystem. Uh, and you, you never know where, the, the, where those open source pieces are going to end up. So do you need then people like Ryan Floyd, at Storm Ventures, uh, and, and Randy Bias, who, who are the not so fast, maybe as a counterbalance a little bit? I mean, do you need that just to make sure that people who are involved and do have optimistic uh, blue sky outlooks have at least uh, an awareness of what issues there might be? Or, or is that, uh, I mean, is the truth somewhere in the middle? I mean, how does that shake down? Well, I, I think it's just like the last conversation we had with, with Allison Randall. It's, you know, communities do well when communities are diverse, when you have a wide, a wide range of of, of inputs, of ideas, of, of backgrounds. Uh, you know, some of these uh, things are driven by, you know, sort of self-motivated things. Other things people have, you know, more am ambitious sort of goals. But yeah, I think it, having these conversations, having them out in the open, uh, it's perfectly, you know, healthy for those, those arguments to take place. It's, it, that, that tension is good. What you don't want to see, and, and we mentioned it when we were talking to the foundation, is you don't want to see those tensions become so bad that they, they sort of break the things in, in multiple pieces. And we've seen that in other foundations and other communities where, you know, they call it forking in the open source world, but, you know, they get so upset at each other, they, they can't come to any agreement architecturally or engineering-wise or just, you know, philosophically, and they split in half, and and that those two communities, you know, tend to fall apart. The OpenStack one is still, for the most part, together. Uh, you know, it may have a little bit of, uh, you know, the Millennium Falcon. It's been, you know, beat up a little bit from here and there, but but it's still cruising along, and uh, it's a good thing. It's a it's a good thing that that Randy is allowed to, you know, continue to sort of voice his opinion that that Ryan can make bets on 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 things, and he may, you know, win on some and lose on others. But but that's that's the industry. That's that's how these communities are working. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you know. If it, you talk to uh, our chief research officer, Peter Burris, talk about the diffusion of technology, absolutely we're seeing that here. It's, uh, this thing takes time, uh, and of course, you need some people out there pointing out, you know, here are the big things we need to fix, um, and you know, then there's the marketing to say, you know, where things go. It's, it's great to say, I mean, even, you know, the OpenStack survey, there's good progress made, but it's, People that are using or trying or doing something with OpenStack, you know, 65% of production. That doesn't mean that 65% of enterprises are using OpenStack in production. That's 65% of the people that are doing something with OpenStack, which is, is you know, a subset of the overall market out there. Um, and that shows, you know, the, the market here is, you know, it's only in the, you know, billion to two billion dollar range here, is, which is a, you know, very small fraction of the multi-trillion dollar yearly budget uh, in this space. Um, you mentioned the user survey, and I, I believe it was Jonathan Bryce who talked about this this morning with, with the two of you, that um, one little nugget they found interesting was that about 30% of the respondents had carried over from the last survey to this one. And although they had more respondents than ever, that obviously tells them that the market's growing, there is more interest, the respondent pool is growing. Uh, very encouraging sign in that respect. And so uh, I think that certainly reflects, again, the ever-growing nature of what's happening here. Uh, Luke Tucker at Cisco, had him on the stage, had him on the set. Um, Stu, just some thoughts about where Lou was coming from, the Cisco perspective. Oh, well, so we've got Lou on tomorrow. Or tomorrow, so, I'm uh, sorry. I, I, it, it's all right, John. You know, maybe let, let me ask you a question then. You know, right. we're two days in, right. uh, you, know, you, you know, give me your take on theCUBE so far. Um, the, I'm really impressed with the range of topic uh, that's covered here. And I think if you want to have an idea about what's happening at a show and looking at all the angles, uh, that this certainly is the resource to turn to. I think the uh, having the diversion of, uh, of opinion, uh, when I heard Randy Bias come out, you know, it really caught my attention, uh, for sure, because he has very strong opinions, and not that he's a the sky is falling kind of guy, but I do find contrarians to be enlightening and sometimes uh, refreshing in that respect. I think it's good. Um, maybe not to, you know, what the folks at the uh, at the foundation would like to hear, but he admitted as much, right? He said, I might, might be the, maybe not the most popular guy around, um, but I do think that's kind of the nature of this community, is if you have a wart, you should 
talk about it. If you have a, if there's a wrinkle, it ought to be discussed. It ought to be dealt with. And so I think that in terms of what an enterprise uh, evolution that's occurring here, how, however that's shaking out, the fact that you can talk openly about your problems or about your challenges or about disagreements and do it constructively rather than destructively, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. That's uh, a right thing. I, I know we had a couple of our guests that talked about that feedback loop. And in the open source community, it's it's really close. You know, you get that fast feedback, you, you totally know about it. If there's bugs, everybody knows about it. So, you know, that transparency uh, is, uh, you know, pretty much inherent in what's going on. Well, uh, as we wrap up, uh, we do want to thank our sponsors for sure. We're talking about the OpenStack uh, Foundation, also Red Hat and Cisco, and all of our sponsors. We certainly thank them. And uh, Brian, with all apologies to the Brian Belichick reference, I don't think he'd be an open source guy. Well, no, you know? no, 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 but you know, <laughs> they've been successful. So there's, you know, it, it lets you know that you can be successful in open source, you can be successful keeping, <laughs> keeping all of your information hidden uh, as well. So different options, different, different That's right. strokes for different folks. Yeah, there, there's the difference between leveraging the open source and contributing back to it. So, there you go. So yeah, he's, he's using his pool right. of resources you can either, to you great can either, You can either inflate the community or deflate the opposition. Oh. Either way, you have an opportunity to be successful. Uh, spoken like a true Patriots fan. All right, uh, for Brian and Stu, I'm John Walsh. Thank you again for joining us here as we wrap up day two of the OpenStack Summit 2016. Back Back here tomorrow, Wednesday in Austin, for much more on theCUBE.